for me, he is the only man I ever uh, time saw who worked with a real supercomputer up to the 100,000 processors. Now he'll present you the result of Tilda European project, with a, which is very innovative. And uh, this project, as I understand, is intended to implement supercomputer technologies for real industrial problem solution. 45 minutes, please, Vincent. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for this very kind introduction. I'm not the only man uh, dealing with a uh, hundred. Yes, for you. Okay. <laughs> we will see. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm Vincent Coelier from Onera, and I'm here in order to represent the Tilda project, which is a consortium uh, supported by the European Union. And this project is uh, leaded by uh, Charles Hirsch, who have spoken about him uh, two years ago uh, with a Belgium flag here. And uh, so he is leading this project, whereas Werner Hase is managing this project. These are my co-authors here. But uh, as you will see, uh, the presentation is going to include results from the other partners. So the outline of my presentation uh, will be uh, composed uh, as follows. The short descriptions of the TILDA project in order to see you uh, to present you the consortium and the objectives of the project. Then I will uh, pass some results uh, about uh, obtained by the different partners roughly at midterm, that is to say a little bit before midterm because midterm is in next November. And uh, because I have some time, I will highlight some results regarding DG with our code developed at Onera, which is the uh, Agora code. And I'm going to enter in some details about uh, DG methods for real test case problems. So regarding the objectives of TILDA, as it is written in the proposal, the main goal of the TILDA projects is to combine efficient higher order numerical scheme and innovative LES and DNS techniques more LES than DNS, in order to solve complex flow configuration at industrial operational co uh, conditions. But I have to say, to add that uh, this is a, a first step, uh, and in the title of TILDA it is written, paving the way to go further for industrial applications. It's clear that the real goal of the project is not to have fully industrial LES at the end of the project, which is the uh, end of 2008. So uh, the other objective is to obtain high resolution of LES and DNS at industrial levels. This is the objective, um, TRL 5 and 6 in two years, it's ambitious. And reducing the need of, need of experimental and increasing further the predictive capacity of CFD simulation in the full design envelopes. Uh, reducing the need of uh, experiments is not uh, suppressing the experiment. It's clear that I, I'm here and I, I've seen many uh, talks uh, dealing with experiments, which are the ultimate uh, goal to compare with uh, computational results with the verification and validation process, which is uh, more and more applied, especially in the framework of the high order uh, technology uh, schemes. So the project has, uh, aims at performing high order computation for the LS and ALS and fully exploiting HPC advances running on many tens, tens of thousands processors in order to get the LES results uh, more or less in uh, five, one or two days, which is uh, also very ambitious. And uh, in order to be able to exploit er very efficiently the many degrees of freedom we are dealing with uh, when using uh, higher order methods, even if the goal of higher order methods is to uh, lower as much ap as possible the number of degrees of freedom for a given accuracy. Otherwise, with the first or second order, you can increase the uh, uh, degrees of freedom and have a very uh, big problem <coughs> too. So the, the partners are the, the following. Uh, I am following the numbering here. So it is leaded by Numeca and uh, with DLR, Onera, Dassault, Safran, uh, which is a French engines manufacturer for uh, aircraft and helicopters and missiles too. Serfax, who is uh, located in Toulouse. Cenero in Belgium. Université Catholique de Louvain, uh, Catholic uh, University of Louvain in Belgium. 
Bergamo University in the north of Italy, Imperial College and Tsagi. So I'm not entering in the administrative uh, aspect of the project, but I wanted to highlight the main goals, uh, which uh, the main technical goals of uh, uh, Tilda. First is to increase as much as possible uh, the, 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 the time evolution of the system in order to reduce the computational cost of the unstudied simulation of LES and DNS. So uh, people are dealing with uh, time adaptive methods, implicit methods consistent with the time accuracy and robustness uh, for space-time integration methods. So this is for the efficiency. For the accuracy of the LES approaches, uh, different techniques are developed, the multi-level approaches, the space adaptive uh, methods and meshings, and also it's not the final goal, but wall model have to be used for very complex uh, industrial problems because otherwise we will get too many uh, grid points and too many unknowns. Uh, this is uh, an alternative, uh, which is not the final goal of LES, it's clear, but uh, so we have also to deal with that. But uh, as it has been uh, explained by uh, Professor uh, Bosniakov, we are dealing with HPC, which is only mean today to deal with real problem. And uh, so uh, we have different means in different countries, European project, national projects, in order to be able to run simulations with uh, 100,000, but a little bit less at the present time, uh, 10, um, uh, the number of uh, regular uh, use of uh, HPC is closer to uh, 10,000 cores than to 100,000 cores e each day. So in that uh, problem, we have to deal with grid generation of high order methods. I'm going to see you uh, an explanation of why we are using high order grid generation. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the accuracy is destroyed close to the wall. Parallelization of uh, on to several ten of thousand cores and the I.O. processing uh, in order to deal efficiently with uh, uh, pre-processing and post-processing with analysis of this data. And all these uh, developments are, uh, have to be validated with uh, test cases, which have been developed initially with a given set of test cases, but which, which can be enriched, as we have seen with a SAGI proposal with a, a dual nozzle flow. We will see this example. And so I'm presenting very quickly these uh, basic test cases are more advanced. So the classical periodic hill at <coughs> different Reynolds numbers. The Taylor Green Vortex, very popular in order to assess the uh, accuracy of the methods for uh, LES and DNS for small Reynolds number or higher Reynolds numbers. The uh, test case proposed at Tonera, which is a, a shock boundary la layer interaction in a 3D swept bump, creating a 3D effect. Uh, which has been uh, experimented uh, 20 years ago by Delry at Onera. A jet nozzle with uh, noise uh, problems uh, uh, directly linked to these uh, configurations. Then we have also uh, Falcon proposed by Dassault, a full aircraft. Uh, we have a high lift cascade uh, for uh, turbo engine uh, configurations. We have uh, nozzles with chevron or without chevron, we have the both test cases, and uh, landing gear configurations, and also very classical uh, uh, turbo engine configurations, which is a NASA Rotor 37, which has been uh, computed many times in the past, and uh, which has been a test case for many uh, international, international groups, American, but also uh, in the framework of the CFD community. So uh, regarding the different uh, partners and the different methods, uh, initially, we have chosen to uh, deal with spectral type methods, that is to say, not high order finite volume. I have in mind that these methods exist and still at Onera we have strong debates between the uh, finite volumes or DG or uh, spectral time approach, but uh, this, uh, all the partners are dealing with high order finite element type methods, mainly with discontinuous Galerkin methods, University of Bergamo, Onera, Dillert, Sagi, Senero, Louvain, and Safran, uh, uh, who is, uh, which is using, in fact, uh, codes developed by uh, uh, research center partners. Spectral defense methods uh, by Serfax, flux reconstruction schemes by Imperial College and Numeca, and uh, because they are used to to with a uh, continuous finite element method since many years, Dassault Aviation uh, has developed his own 
code with finite element methods since many years. So the, they were the first to use the finite element approach for very complex configurations to for me. All these methods use unstructured meshes in order to be able to make HP and H local H adaptation, either purely tetrahedral as DASO, for instance, or hybrid mesh type element with hexahedra, tetrahedra, uh, pyramids, and prisms. And uh, as I have uh, already said, uh, we have uh, clearly in mind that the comparison with reference finite volume methods, second order but also high order methods, which exist in the, in the literature or also uh, in industrial codes, are made within the context, not directly perhaps in tilde, where we are more concentrated on our methods, but uh, this is done within the context of the high order CFD workshop. The fourth order edition have been having, having been organized in uh, last June in uh, uh, next uh, with the uh, Econas conference in Creta. Okay. So now I am uh, going to describe some results uh, of the partners. They send me some some slides in order to highlight uh, the, the where they are at the midterm of, of this project. And uh, first, uh, Numeca, uh, which is the leader of this project, is dealing with flux reconstruction methods, which is implemented within the in, uh, commercial code Fine Turbo. And uh, here, uh, they're using, uh, they're trying to reduce as much as possible for HPC configurations the, the, the computational time by using and optimizing uh, the combination using BLAST libraries uh, for uh, matrix matrix uh, products uh, computations. And they have uh, improved by a ratio of 30% uh, the time required to make some computations for uh, basic configurations of the test cases uh, of tilde. Uh, so they have also worked and they're still working on non conforming meshes. Uh, both in H and P senses, that is to say, uh, DG is very, or that type of method is very uh, useful to have non conformal meshes uh, thanks to the flux uh, exchanges uh, through the faces and the volume integral, which are independent of the interfaces. And so the approach chosen uh, to uh, handle the coupling of non conforming meshes is the so called mortar element method, which is uh, uh, well known in the literature. So what uh, they have uh, got uh, at the present time is that they, they have used uh, roughly uh, 36,000 uh, cores and uh, based on this, uh, based on that, uh, excuse me, they, they have this uh, scal scalability curve uh, which is uh, of a good uh, shape and uh, in order to be able to, to use effi effectively this code on many, many cores. So Serfax is also dealing uh, uh, mainly with uh, HPC approach and they are using in the Jaguar code the um, HP adaptation methods uh, and uh, they are also developing co-treatment uh, on the fly, that is to say, it's very important for LUS computation to be able to have very efficient code treatment uh, because it's not possible to store all the information and uh, post uh, treat that at the end of the computation. So they are also improving and trying to uh, assess uh, different approaches MPI, OpenMP, hybrid MPI, OpenMP, but they are also working on GPUs uh, as it is not written here. So the current efficiency of this solver has been tested. Uh, on uh, this uh, sketch, this was for the uh, the reference test case. I think was the Taylor Green, but I am not sure about that. And you can see the scalability based on the reference computation performed on 1,024 cores. So not one, but 1,024 uh, uh, cores, and they got an efficiency of 96 percent here. So it's a very important aspect of the project is the efficiency on the course. Uh, Imperial College uh, is dealing with a flux <coughs> reconstruction methods, and uh, this is a team leaded by uh, Peter Vincent. And uh, so they have a cross-platform uh, petascale CFD with only, as it is written, 8,000 lines of Python. And so uh, the methods can uh, choose any order of accuracy in space on mixed element uh, via flux reconstruction approach, which is, and the, s the code is an uh, open source license. And a recent uh, simulation with uh, this pi uh, 
Pi Fr uh, on Titor and Pis uh, has been shortlisted for the 2016 Gordon Bell Prize. You can see the, all the information on that uh, website here. So uh, besides this uh, efficient uh, work on HPC, uh, they are working on uh, reducing the aliasing driven by the instabilities of the fructose construction. And so they are uh, working on uh, to, to improve the flux reconstruction in order to, to lower as much as possible aliasing problems, <coughs> and, uh, which is uh, possibly creating some instabilities in the computations. Uh, so these uh, new techniques has been, uh, has proven to be stable for 1D linear problems. So they are investigating linear problems and temporal uh, discretization errors. And this is a typical test case of the TILDA project, which is a, a turban cascade uh, TC106, which has been presented in the, in the slide uh, before. So DLR um, uh, has uh, worked a lot in the previous European project on RANS methods for uh, with DG. And then uh, they are now uh, turning to to LES or LES type methods, working on implicit time integration scheme, adaptive mesh refinement, wall functions, and the test case they are dealing with are the TGV, the Boeing rudimentary landing gear, implicit methods, uh, which be applied to these test cases, and they are also working on space adaptive methods. Here, are first results on the TGV uh, for the Reynolds. Uh, 1600, which is the basic Reynolds we are using. You can see here for a given P, which is P equals 3 for order scheme, uh, the influence of the mesh refinement uh, compared to the reference data, which I guess is a uh, pseudo spectral methods uh, we are uh, all using. And the black line is a reference. Uh, you can see that the P3 and 32 pair direction uh, is uh, not good, whereas by increasing to 64 and even more to 128 elements with a type of number of degrees of freedom which is strongly increasing, you can, uh, you can reach the reference data. So the you can see the with explicit the Runge-Kutta methods, the time step was very low. And so many, many time steps in order to, uh, to, 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 to reach, uh, to, to get to to have these results, whereas where the single uh, diagonal implicit Runge-Kutta uh, force order method, they are, were used, <coughs> they have used uh, uh, this time step, uh, which is a uh, thousand times higher. So uh, they have also uh, performed the first uh, computation on the per periodic hill <laughs> at Reynolds, bulk Reynolds number here, not the uh, tau Reynolds number, uh, 2,800. And so uh, you can see the mean uh, velocity profiles comparing with P3 two type of meshes. And clearly, on that, uh, on the course one, they were not uh, able to reach the right uh, levels of the reference DNS data, which is available, uh, which has been uh, published many years ago. And so uh, for P3, it is uh, noticeable that they have to refine the mesh. Uh, we will see for other with other results later on that we can also increase the order of accuracy, which can be also possible to reach the reference data. So uh, regarding uh, Cenero, Cenero uh, has developed a DG uh, LES code since many years, and so they are able to do uh, advanced computations on turbines, for instance, here. This is a... Uh, uh, um, VKI LS89 uh, configurations, which, see, which is a transitional flow. And you can see a picture of uh, instantaneous flow uh, with a uh, sp uh, spectroscopy type uh, image here. And uh, so here, uh, if we, uh, the goal of this computation is to compare the heat transferred coefficients at the wall. And you can see that the reference uh, experiments have three levels of uh, injection of turbulence, 1%, 4%, and 6%. And these computations, as uh, those we have made at Onera, and I'm going to present that later, have been made with a 6%, but the 6% here is this line here. So it is fitting with a 1% and 4%, more or less, and we have also the same results I am uh, going to show. But uh, normally, we should, uh, we sh we should reach this, uh, this level. 
there is still perhaps a problem of refinement or perhaps a problem of level of injection of the turbulence. Mm. So DG is not uh, solving all the problems here. So uh, they are working also on a world model uh, with high LES, that is to say no model, unresolved DNS, uh, many, many uh, words are used for that type of model, who are also using that type, but also uh, subsal model uh, in order to stabilize the computations. And so they are working on calibration for that uh, channel flow at Reynolds 2 equal uh, 5,200, uh, the wall low. Uh, and so the problem is to to get to, 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 to deal with the uh, convergence in time uh, statistics and homogeneity in space and to identify the region where the velocity has to be taken to apply the wall uh, laws. It's not so easy. But what uh, they have got as conclusions today is that the scheme, the DG scheme, has to be at least equal to P equal 4 because uh, this is a conclusion we have also got. That is to say, when using a, a odd number, uh, we had some problems. So you can use p equal 2, but p equal 2 is not sufficient. So p equal 4 should be used in order to uh, have good behavior of the bundle layer, even if the f in the first cell they got a strange behavior. But in the other part, uh, it's well fitting with a log low uh, wall uh, for that test case. So they are working on non-equilibrium models uh, with a 1D uh, rule uh, normal to the wall and transition criteria too with DG model. So uh, I'm not going to, pre to detail this test case because I got the result yesterday evening. But uh, so what they are doing is that they are performing an energy balance uh, study uh, proving that uh, no model uh, is a good uh, approach in order to, to to check the energy balance uh, uh, low in, in the flow field. Here, uh, another uh, aspect of the Tilda project is to be able to deal with industrial problems. But in that case, it is necessary to be able to deal with transonic flow with shock. And here, the goal is to check that the techniques, the normal techniques, in order to stabilize the, the shock with DG, is able to uh, to, to respect the, the turbulence uh, evolution through the shock waves. And here you can see that with a non-dimensionalized uh, direction in X, you can see a good agreement, rather good agreement between reference data, uh, which I don't know in that case, with the uh, computations they have uh, performed. And these are the, uh, the stresses here for, uh, you, for, you, for you and V. Uh, component here. So they've got uh, good results here. Regarding Dassault, uh, Dassault is using a continuous uh, finite element formulation with a SUPG uh, petrov galerkin method in order to stabilize the computations. And in the past, they were using P1 or at most P2. Now they are going to use P3 uh, method with purely tetrahedra approach with a fully implicit time integration. And so they have demonstrated the scalability on uh, 16,000 processors. And here, this is a TGV. Uh, I guess uh, there is a small because it has been written 1,500. This is perhaps a new test case, but most of the time it's uh, 1,600. And so they perform a study in order to show that by increasing the order of accuracy, that is to say P equal 3 uh, with a pure DNS, they are improving uh, the results. If we uh, regard the, the total dissipation rate, which is not the most uh, uh, differentiating uh, <coughs> parameter to observe the, the, the different uh, schemes, but the, 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 the result dissipation is uh, much more uh, uh, discriminant in that case in order to see what type of method is uh, necessary to use. And so uh, they're also using, you can see in the different approach which, ha which have been presented, that they're also using the VMS, that is to sell the variational multiscale model proposed by Hughes uh, some years ago. Uh, that is to say, in that case, the goal is to apply a subcell model, but not on all the scales, but on the finer scales only. And here, they have uh, based their VMS approach on the finer mesh uh, they are using, whereas when using DG, when using DG, it is possible to adapt this VMS with a P 
value, that is to say if you are using p equals 3 or 4, you can only apply, thanks to this VMS approach, the uh, subscre subgrade model as uh, Smagorinsky on p equals 3 or 4 and not on p equals 0, 1 and 2, which is lowering the dissipation whereas uh, not destroying uh, the accuracy. So the goal for them is to apply, as we have seen, uh, these techniques on the full Falcon aircraft and to get, with uh, 50,000 cores, uh, full computation of uh, LOS-type computations in uh, two or three days. Uh, University of Bergamo, they have a strong experience with DG, uh, mainly with RANS, and they now they are also uh, going to use LES. And uh, the team of um, Francesco Bassi is uh, dealing uh, with different uh, methods for improving uh, time integration techniques. And here, it is very interesting because uh, these are new results for me. He has replaced explicit singly diagonal implicit methods by linearly implicit Rosenbrock methods, which is, uh, in fact, the they are linearizing the nonlinear implicit techniques in this uh, uh, SD. IRK method, and what they've got, which is not surprising, is that for uh, they are lowering the work units compared to the other uh, approaches, but they are also lowering the numerical error for a given time integration. 15. So uh, for this, uh, they are also using uh, the rotor 37 on what uh, on, on which they have applied uh, DG techniques for classical runs and also uh, XLS, which is extremely large LES uh, approach, uh, which is able to improve at the margin the results. But these are the first results they have got. Uh, if we compare the integrated uh, uh, <coughs> distribution of total pressure and total temperature in radial uh, down to the uh, trailing edge, you can see the comparison, which is a classical exercise for this type of method. For SAGI, as we have seen, I have extracted some slides. Uh, a comparison <coughs> with DG using uh, three P equals three, uh, that is to say a fourth order techniques, uh, is able to, to, to reach a very good accuracy for that uh, cylindric uh, flow uh, around the cylinder problem. Whereas for the second order finite volume, and even for the fifth order we know scheme, we, it was not the same uh, result in that case. And so the, the slopes uh, regarding the error versus uh, the number of degrees of freedom is uh, better with the DG than with the classical finite volumes here. So uh, the TGV has also been computed. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the same results than the others, that is to say, a better agreement when increasing uh, the order of accuracy for a given number of uh, elements here. So I'm not going to detail that, but it is also the goal to study <coughs> to, uh, to, to apply the techniques on that uh, uh, supersonic uh, uh, dual stream jet here. Uh, for Onera, so we, I'm and perhaps 10 minutes, but I'm going to enter in more details. So it's clear that we had uh, the ELSA code, for instance, which is able to, to deal with a type of uh, flow configuration, that is to say uh, uh, flow uh, jet flows, and uh, DES, that is to say uh, zonal DES applications, uh, landing gear, uh, engines, and aircrafts. But uh, the it's clear that the second order or more or the third order method are not sufficient today to, to deal with more complex problems and we would like to lower the, no, the CPU time to, to get a better uh, results. So we decided to launch different prob uh, uh, code uh, developments and in that uh, among these codes we decided to, to launch a also a DG methods uh, code which HP and and refinement, that is to say, local physical model uh, improvement. So, so we are dealing with DG. So you, you know, because many people uh, dealing with DG are present in this room. So I am not going to uh, discuss about the advantages and the drawbacks of the DG. The advantages is a very uh, is a is a the possibility to go <coughs> to uh, 
uh, p as, as uh, high as possible you would like to do. It is well adapted to HPC, but the, the problems, the drawbacks, leads in the uh, in the strong uh, limitation of the time integration scheme with explicit. So we have to use implicit, but stabilization of implicit it's not so obvious in all cases. So just here we have used a modal and a nodal approach, multi-element like Frederick's and Rowe and BR2, by Rebay2, shot capturing techniques based on the Guillermo uh, techniques with uh, addition of uh, non-linear uh, uh, viscosity term based on entropy production. Wardening also with explicit implicit uh, scheme in order to lower the CPU time. So it's a very classical one. So uh, what, but what we do is uh, we would like to be able to deal with RANs, with DNS and with LES and also in the near future with LES. So we, al we have developed all these techniques, even some first techniques of uh, real gas problem with stiff nut gas and Van der Waals uh, law in order to be able to be applied to engines. And uh, just a, a remark I wanted uh, to do is that for the high order scheme of DG type at least, it is required to have a high order uh, representation of the geometry in order to lower the number of elements. You have to represent the curves exactly, uh, consistently with the order of, of accuracy because for instance here, if you see the, the entropy error uh, applied with different type of P approximation but with a straight mesh, you cannot be able to reach the right level of the formal order of accuracy. But when you use a force order mesh representation for the bubble here, for the, for the bump here, you, you, you are able to, to reach this formal accuracy in practical way here. This is why it is necessary to deal with high order mesh, which is not today straightforward uh, for very complex configurations. So uh, with the uh, shock boundary layer uh, techniques uh, developed in the code Agora, we were able to prove that for a given uh, mesh refinement by increasing the P level, that is uh, going from P equal 1 to P equal 3, force order scheme, with implicit scheme uh, proving the efficiency here, we were able to improve the comparison with experimental data here uh, when going from P equal 1 to P equal 2 and P equal 3. So even in a shock boundary layer interaction with a stabilization method, it's interesting to increase the p-order. But uh, it's clear that the most uh, efficient way is perhaps to increase in H refinement in this region and not to, not to go too to high in, in p. For rotor uh, 37, we have also uh, proven uh, this is the same, same case than uh, uh, this performed by uh, Bergamo. And uh, this is robust for shock bundle layer, layer interaction for RANS methods. And uh, what is interesting here is that we b with dealing, uh, uh, by dealing with a P2 approximation of on a very coarse mesh, 87,000 points, we got roughly the same results in terms of uh, total pressure and total temperature distribution than when dealing with P1 on the 670, uh, 100,000 points. Uh, that is to say, by uh, dividing the number of degrees of freedom by a factor of three, roughly, for the same accuracy for that case. For the TGV, so the same case uh, as presented uh, many times, what is interesting here is that uh, we, have deal, uh, we have done many computations with that test case, but if you compare for the same number of degrees of, free of freedom, this computation 48 element with P3 per direction, uh, 48, to uh, 32 with a P5, same number of degrees of freedom. So we've got a better results with a 32 P5 approximation than with a 48 P3 approximation. That proves that for certain case at least, but uh, uh, it is more interesting to increase the P value than the refinement uh, locally, at least for that test case. It's not the case for all the, okay, for the applications. So also uh, we have performed uh, computations not only on two 1,800, but also up to 37,000 uh, for the bulk Reynolds number. And what we have got, I'm not going to enter it into the details, but uh, it has been published, it, it is going to be published in the computers and fleets uh, next, uh, next month. Uh, what we have got as a con conclusion is that there is a strong debate regarding implicit LES uh, non-resolved DNS, that is to say the same thing perhaps, and uh, addition of uh, sub-cell model, but it could depend on the Reynolds number for a given mesh, for instance. 
uh, it is clear that ILES was sufficient for Reynolds number 2008, uh, 110,000, but for Reynolds numbers 19,000 and 37,000, it was not stable, and we had to, incre uh, to add some uh, VMS uh, uh, LES model in order to stabilize the computation. So another test case, uh, how many, five minutes per hand? Okay, no. not more, okay. So uh, uh, the transonic uh, test, the, no, the subsonic test case, uh, which is a test case of, uh, of a tilde, and here what uh, we've got, got is that uh, uh, P4, P5, P3 uh, computations, in that case, if the mesh is, is too coarse, even with a P, excuse me, even with a P5, we were not able to reach the right levels. So it is necessary uh, sometimes to also increase the number of elements in order to be able to reach the right physics. So HP adaptation for us is a future, not only H, not only P. Here for the VKI turbine, I've just uh, presenting some results, uh, proving that we have got the same results and uh, it's consistent with the results obtained by uh, Senero. That is to say, with a 6% computation, we have got here in that case the experimental data of uh, 1 or 4%, but in that case it's, it was better. Uh, here we have performed also RANS computation from P0 to P3 without any refinement of mesh, and just by increasing the P value, you can see that we increase also the, re the resolution of the, of the, of the flow. Uh, this is a nozzle here, which has been presented in the Turbulence uh, ETMM 11 meeting, which is uh, uh, in Palermo thi this week by one of my colleagues. And here, what we are doing is we are comparing Agora DG with our internal code CEDR, which is for combustion. And uh, here, uh, these are first results of comparison. What we have got is that, at least for the high frequencies, the in the We've got better results with uh, DGP3 uh, compared to said second order finite volume schemes. But these are just first results and not uh, uh, the conclusion has to be refined in order to, to really uh, have a definitive conclusion. But this is for us the first time we're dealing with an uh, acoustics problem uh, in one shot with DG for turbulence and pro propagation in the same shot. So just uh, in order to demonstrate on a very simple case that H refinement, non-conformal H refinement is, could be of uh, interest. If you compare the vertical uh, slope here, with P equal one, that is to say minus two, with the slope obtained with local mesh refinement with less mesh points, we have got the same slope by only refining in some regions of the flow based here on an entropy indicator, which is very easy. But uh, that proves that uh, local H refinement with P refinement here for uh, ideal convection diffusion problem should be the future for the DG methods. It has been applied also for the Taylor Green Vortex. For a given error, we have got a better, uh, for the same error of accuracy, we have less degrees of freedom by local refinement than by uh, uniformly refining the mesh or the P. So some concluding. Five minutes for I just conclude. So some concluding remarks. So uh, in the different, uh, in TILDA, but also in the different uh, projects uh, which have been organized before TILDA, uh, we have proved, uh, all the partners uh, and the past partners too, that the higher order finite element methods with DG, uh, 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 continuous finite element, flux reconstruction, spectral discontinuous methods, are able to reproduce Reynolds number uh, dependent feature of the flow. Uh, further LS computation require local H and P refinement uh, with spectral type methods, but they have also to be compared at, at each type of the development with the classical finite volume methods, it's clear, <coughs> in order to convince our uh, uh, users to use that uh, new type of approaches. Many works has been done and you will be done in the future regarding uh, optimization of HPC for different heterogeneous or open MP MPI approaches. Uh, so, uh, need to implement efficient, accurate post-processing technique, which is not done in the same, uh, which is done now, but uh, we are late compared to the development of the code. That is to say, we have to implement efficient post-processing, on-the-fly processing. 
I wanted also to highlight the fact that there is a TILDA workshop which is organized in Toulouse uh, in November 2016, so it's still open, and the website is here. And for me, uh, when I see, uh, when I've seen what I've seen uh, during this meeting, this the HASHO methods lead to closer research between CFD and CAA, as I have heard this morning, in order to predict fine turbulence uh, for aerodynamics and for aeroacoustics. Mm -hmm. so it is absolutely necessary to work together. And uh, these high order spectral methods are complementary to classical finite volume methods for me. Thank you very much.